Welcome to WP Tonic. Welcome to WP Tonic, episode 65, WordPress Speed Machine, part three. And this is going to be about plugins today. And it's really nice. We're going to invite some folks in. We hope to get more and more WordPress people who are experts. You know, Jonathan, I think we need to set a standard time each week to do this show. What do you think? And we'll get more folks in. Yeah, sure. Hey, this is Bill. I want to tell you about what we, how we use Blab now. Blab is a great platform, blab.im. You can type in Bill Conrad and you'll see all our shows. So on Thursdays, almost every Thursday at 4 o'clock, you're going to find WP Tonic. You'll find us on the 29th. And at 5 o'clock, you're going to find MailRite. And then Sunday at 9.30 in the morning, you're going to find a political show, which Jonathan is often on, that I'm on all the time. And it's called Meet the People's Press meetthepeoplespress.com and at the end of the show if there's time we're going to open it up and answer all your questions also quick commercial real fast I'm producing a product it's going to show you how to produce a podcast just like these and it's going to take blab and we're going to show you how to take that blab and turn it into a podcast big time go right now to podcastershome.com forward slash blab b-l-a-b and you can sign up for $10 there just leave your email address and you'll be locked in for $10 and save a, a bit of money on that course. I think that course for $10 is going to be highly valuable. It's not one of these $1,000 courses. It's a great little course to get you up fast using Blab to create a podcast. Well, that's enough of the commercials. We'll see you on these shows, and we hope to meet you on Blab. So remember to tune into our shows at 4 o'clock and 5 o'clock on Thursdays, and that's 4 o'clock Pacific, and on Sunday morning at 9.30 Pacific. Now back to the episode of WP Tiny. So, um, we're so all tired. Th- this drive, this drive on. Um, we're gonna we're gonna talk about some plugins, but let's just finish off. What, what's a plugin? <laughs> yeah, what is a plugin? Um, just finish off on a couple of things that can affect your speed from the last episode, and. One thing that really makes a big difference, but it can be a two-edged sword, is CDNs. What is a CDN? Well, basically, your where your website is hosted, it's hosted on some big server in a server center. I've got um, a server in my house. It's not real big. Uh, there we go. And um, basically, people from all over the world have to get to that server. And even though it's almost done at the speed of light, if they're halfway around the world, let's say they're in Australia, there's going to be a delay. What CDNs is they they take a copy of your website and they put it in a server nearer to that person in Australia. That is the fund. It's a lot more complicated than that, but that's the basic theory. Um, the one that, you know, there's a number, even, uh, you know, you've been playing with it, haven't you? Amazon. Um, Amazon S3 oh, too, yeah, yeah. Amazon, I use Cloudflare. Amazon provides their own, but the one that I've been working with is Cl- Cl- Cloudflare, and um, their free version is pretty impressive. And they then they do a paid version. They do free levels basically. The paid version is twenty dollars. I'm using the um, free version, um, but here's a little bit of advice. Um, it you put you you when you're setting it up you have to go to where your domain is parked and then you change the dns records that's really quite easy um and then cloud host will scan everything and it does you know does it really good job of that but there's some other adjustments that you've got to go in and do and a lot of people just rely on the automated settings and that can be um, a problem and you definitely won't get the full benefit the good news is that they provide a lot of help really good help information and there's a lot of information on in google about how to set it up it is a little bit contradictory 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 um but um, you can. It took me a little bit of time, 
um, to set it up properly, but it's made a big difference. Um, so what did you do to set up Cloudflare on the auto settings? Um, there's, I'm not going to go into enormous detail here, but there, there's just some settings where you set where it purges um, the cache and you have to do some adjustments there. Okay, so, okay, uh, okay. Any, I got you. I know I like Cloudflare, though. I've been flipping it on my yeah. sites. So okay. if you go... Yep. Keep on going. So you've got uh, mail dash right mail right dot com mail right dot com. Is that on cloud? I just put WP Tonic. Obviously, I've got to do a bit more work on that. So um, that's so something. Is mail right on it right now? Yeah, both. But I'll just right. recently put plus your VPN. Um, it's very, one, mail oh, right's one, very fast now. One of the other factors I've got to point out when you first put it on, and you don't do um, there's some star wild card. Um, symbols you have to put in you you have to make sure that your login page is not cached because <laughs> if i set it up and i forgot and you stopped you from logging into the back end of your own site um so you you got to watch out for that. that that caused a little bit of a heart attack until i realized what was going on now you're so, using one pass does that affect it at all i use last pass i never nah, had that problem that, it was to do with the caching bill okay um so the other thing that I want to quickly talk about is JavaScript and CSS. And this is another thing that really slows the site down. Unfortunately, it's an area that even a lot of plugin providers um, is not so much. It is a quantity issue. Not It's a quantity issue because the more plugins you have, the more you can have a rogue plugin. <laughs> um, um, yep. It's more to do quality of coding. And one area where a lot of plugins fail on less experienced plugin developer is the use of JavaScript. And basically, um, WordPress comes with a version of jQuery. Um, and if you know, if you, you can get a lot of people who are very experienced in PHP, but they're not that experienced in WordPress. And they don't know how to call the jQuery library that's inbuilt into WordPress. And there's some other factors as well. So they can call external um, libraries. And this also affects um, text because um, you used to be very limited about the, the fonts you could use apart in images. But now with external um, font farms, which Google provides a free font farm, but there's a couple, Adobe provides one, but that's paid. Um, but unfortunately, uh, you can have a lot of plugins that are calling from separate font farms and also mm -hmm. separate versions of jQuery and their own version of CSS. These queries soon can build up and you can end up with a real jumble of a mess. And you want your J, the other factor that most people don't realize is jQuery. J if if your page is waiting for all of jQuery, nothing else is going to load. This is why you get a page hanging for a long time um, on sites that are not being set up correctly because they're waiting for all the jQuery to load. And then um, what you want is the jQuery, if it can be done, to be loaded in the footer area. So all all the images and a lot of the text is loading and then the jQuery is loaded. Yeah, so right. people stay there so they see it right away. Well, they're seeing something yeah. happening rather yeah. than just a white screen, you know, right. basically. Right, right, right. So they're the twins. So let's go on to some plugins that might help. Um, I just want to point out that some of these plugins you must not use unless you've got a total backup of your website. Now, then, Jonathan, uh, quick question. I, I, I have the notes up right now. Yeah, and I don't see a lot of plugins in here. I see. I must have got the old version here. Plugin I did. I did, I did. Um, I did text you saying there was an updated version in. Slack. I know. I know. I know. I was okay. I'll pull it from Slack. Go on. Drive on. Drive on. Drive on. Um, We're halfway done today. So basically, um, do not do these plugins. Some of these plugins, unless you've got a total backup of your website. So I really can't stress that. Um, 
first of all, caching plugins. There are a couple that are really popular. The one, the two that I um, one I use all the time, and the other one has become very recently extremely popular. The one I use is Zencash. It's a, I use the Premier. They do offer a free version that has all the key, most of the key functionality, but I pay for the pro version. And um, I was fathered in, it was called, I forgot what it was called, it, it, it changed name about six months ago, and I, I got grandfathered in. Um, so I got a multi-site license. Um, nice. But, but basically, Zencash um, is extremely powerful. Andy, this is the caching plugin that Andy recommends to his clients. And um, it comes... You can just put it in, and the 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 normal settings do a great job. But you also got the power of considerable customization, and they do provide a lot of good documentation. And it, it's and it plays really well with Cloudflare. So um, caching is really important. Uh, you know, it, it's a pain as well. But, you know, when you've got your site really sorted out, having a good C, you know, clear, clear, cloud flare and having a really good caching plugin will make a big, big difference to the performance of your website. Um, another one that's become very popular is WP Rocket. Um, Got a question on that. Thank you out there. Um, that's become very, very popular. Um, I haven't used it. Um, I don't think they do a free version. The one site license is around $39. Um, it looks pretty sweet, though, and it's got a lot of really good reviews. Um, it does look nice. Um, so t- the, the, they've had 26,000 people download it in less than a year. Um, they've become a very successful company. I think they're making a gross sales of $30,000 a month. Um, So that's great. On to the images. I I think uh, as a temporary, you know, I think even if you're optimizing them yourself, I think probably using a plugin that also does some optimization as well isn't a bad idea. Um, WB Smash was really, really popular. But the um, they were using a third party service as part of the plugin, and the I think it was Yahoo. They were using some of Yahoo's services, and Yahoo decided to turn off those servers. Um, and WP Smash was totally a paid. They were using a paid service. They found um, a replacement for Yahoo, and they do they do offer a free version and a paid version. And so WP Smash is back in, back in, you know, being popular. Uh, another one I've used is EWW Double Image Optimizer. That does a similar job and also a nice job. Uh, I think doing some, especially on your home page and some of the key landing pages, um, doing some. Uh, optimization yourself is really probably a really good idea and then probably using one of these plugins for the less um crucial pages maybe because if depending on the size of your website and how many images you got you know hand optimizing everything could become a bit of a nightmare bill depending you know yeah i'm still doing that hand optimizing at least all my graphics and pictures with the uh illustrator right um and also just getting them down to 72 DPI at, you know, whatever sizes we need them. It does also quickly depend if you're doing, if you're dealing with photographs, normally J, JPEG optimization is the best um, format to use your images or uh, PNG. If you, if you um, need a um, background, um, transparent background, um, GIFs, are normally better for very plain graphics, lettering, uh, vector art. They don't really handle images that well. So having some fundamental understanding of the different graphics and what format suits 
images is quite useful. Um, Photoshop does a pretty good job. I, I, mm -hmm. I still use Fireworks because um, I think it's one of the most easiest and powerful um, tools for optimizing imaging, but that's my personal opinion. Now, on to some real danger here. You know, you're hey, quick question before we go into the danger zone, yeah. which will be the end of the show. We'll blow up. Quick question on just, just a thought process here. You know, at our level, when I'm working with folks, I'm working with folks who are podcasters, bloggers, sometimes just getting into WordPress, trying to get them set up, making sure their mail client's set up. And one question I'm telling them now, when they go in and set up their code to build a graphics, drop, just open up a page, drop in the graphic, and then go on the back side and drop in your links. And then open up your text and pull the code, stick it on to wherever you're going to put it. All right. How would you, is that how you do it? Is that giving any problems in optimization? I that? didn't follow you actually. To be true. You drop when you make, for example, if you're linking, let's say you're putting in a picture, mm -hmm. right? You're dropping a picture in mm -hmm. without dropping in your picture, but I mean, you're trying to make some code like for a widget. You're making some widget code, right? So on a text block, so you drop, you open a page up, you drop in your graphic. It's all hopefully optimized. And then you're linking it at that time mm -hmm. to your, wherever you're linking it to. Yeah. Now you're, now you're putting the text up. Now you're saving the code and you drop it in your widget. Mm -hmm. Any optimization issues there? Just apart from the image, you know, the image will probably be in your media library. Um, what I'm saying is that um, what a lot of people do is they mess around with the sizing when it, when they're actually working in WordPress so they normally upload um, a, a slightly larger image because obviously if it's smaller and they are pushing out, it will pixelate if it's not a vector right. image, you know, and... Yeah, I always try to make it the size I want it to show up. Well, yeah, that's that's great. But normally you do mess around. What what normally happens is you've got a quite, a, especially beginners, learners, they've got really quite large images and then they crop them down. Mm -hmm. But what they don't realize is that yeah. the actual image size is dependent on the original file. Yep, I totally understand um, what you're saying. That's good to understand. That, I did that mistake when I started. That, that's why you need to go. We've all done it. Uh, we're all been in a rush, and we, you know, client. But you need to go. Right. You need to go, especially on crucial landing pages and the home page. You need to go in, and especially the kind of designs and the demands of clients for the kind of websites they're looking for, they are extremely image heavy. So a lot of them are, and um, it will turn, it will turn a site into treacle on a mobile device bill. Right. 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 It, so no, just, just on, on just one. Can we finishing up? Can we go on to the danger? One, one last thing on widgets, you know, widgets can slow down your site too. So on your widget, what's good practice with a widget with optics, with graphics? It's just the size, isn't it? optimization make sure. size you know yeah. um the other factor that really slows down a lot of sites you've got to be you know is plugins around social media when they're calling in an external api and you've got a lot of um different um social media icons everywhere which is you know understandable but these in my experience a lot of these Social media um, plugins are resource hogs, and when you do your page testing, look using those tools that we recommended. Um, they normally are highlighted as some of the worst offenders. That was another thing I forgot to mention in the last show. Um, to find out real rogue plugins, there's a plugin called P3 Profile. Um, that mm -hmm. will show show which plugins are real really um, taking up a lot of resources. Um, unfortunately, I found that it works perfectly, but it normally highlights like a membership plugin or some crucial plugin that you can't remove anyway. Um, the other thing um, is don't unactivate it after you used it because it's a tremendous resource hog in its own right. So yeah. do not leave it armed. Uh, another factor that um, can... That's a good point about deactivating the plugins you're not using, right? Well, going further, actually. Or taking them out all yeah. the time. Yeah. Um, if you... Um, that's why it's good to have a test site um, because, you know, uh, uh, 
you do not if you're not going to use a plugin remove it remove it for security reasons but also remove it for performance because it's actually it can be deactivated but a lot of the code is still being loaded in the header of the website and and especially if it's calling external external front front library or a jQuery library, it could still be doing that, and it will it will slow your site down to treacle again. So if you're not using a plugin, get rid of it. Right. And we've been doing the show like for almost a year and a half now. I remember giving you a hard time about all the plugins you have on your websites. Oh well, compared to but you know it swings to roundabouts, isn't it? So, uh, you know, it, I'm you know, um, seven to nine. You know, it's yeah. <laughs> well. I thought you said seventy nine plugins. I'm not seven, seven or nine. You have like thirty plugins, right? Most your sites. It, you know, um, I think that's pretty calm. Actually, I think it's. I, I think it's when you get into over fifty. No, I've had some clients that have had over a hundred plugins. But that, that's nuts. But that was a that was a big e commerce website. And when you when you're working with WooCommerce, um, that's one of the factors of working with WooCommerce. Um, they it's their you know how they make money because WooCommerce is free, but they uh, a lot of the functionality you have got to buy in external third party plugins. I call them micro plugins, and it's really right, right, right. That's how they make their money. And it's really easy on a WooCommerce website to have twenty plugins just related to functionality of the shopping cart. Okay, that that said, folks, now I've been playing around with this, and I think it does work. Why don't you just build your nice little skin or something for your WooCommerce site, and just put a a tab up there so you open up this tab it opens up another wordpress site and, and that's why you get you you don't have to bog down no oh, yes, that's what i've been doing everyone go to uh podcastershome.com that's what i'm doing now and start hitting the tabs you go to new media gold you go to uh, timelines of success Another quick thing is, um, especially when you're using that Google speed checking tool, it's got something about remove query stream from static resources. And um, I'm not going to go into, basically, it's a way that external resources like CSS, CSS files and jQuery is handled by WordPress. And WordPress has a, a kind of global function, how it loads this. And Google Google speed checking tool really really doesn't like that, and it's the first. Go back and start start over again. What what what, what is this? It's uh it's called remove. It's called query stream from static resources. When you, okay, when, you, when you use this Google speed tool, the first thing it puts in red always is this. Um, the good news is that almost 90% of cases, there's a plugin. There's about three plugins, but there's one that's particularly popular. And you put it in, you activate it, and it and it keeps Google happy. And when you go back into the speed tool, that particular issue is removed. Um, and I Googled that, and I got all sorts of stuff. Yeah. Um, sorts of now, the real danger stuff is when you're dealing with the database and like if you, if you start messing around with the database for God's sake, have a total backup because um, WP, WP DP manager and WP optimizer are two um, really popular. Um, this is also down. This normally occurs when you're installing, uninstalling loads of plugins, which really you should do on a test site anyway. You don't really want to be uninstalling, installing, but it does happen. Um, <laughs> you know, it's happened on my SaaS, but, you know, it's been a, a year-long project. Your SaaS is really looking good now, Jonathan. It's coming. It's coming, Amazing. It's coming on. It, it, folks, it, it, those listeners out there are live right now. It was terrible. Like, they're so big and so bulky. You worked hard on it, though. But you worked on the programming and design. Yeah. You had a lot of cleaning up to do. Yeah. It's a huge. Um, so... Um, Basically, if you use what happens is if you install a load of plugins and uninstall them, and you un uninstalling them because they're a bit dicey, they become you know the bits of dogs. You found out it's a real dog of a plugin. It's like, in my experience, um, that means also they're probably not coded very well. And when you remove a really badly coded plugin, it's a sign that the developer 
um, hasn't really worked out the removal scripts. So these really doggy plugins normally leave a load of rubbish in your database. So you've been hammered twice. The, you know, they, they slow down your your website to treacle. And then when you try and remove them, they leave a load of trash in your database. So you've been hammered twice. So when this happens a few times, you find that your database gets a bit bogged down with a load of queries that it's been queried your database, but the query, the, the reason for that query no longer exists. So you need to clean that out. So the, these do a pretty good job, but like I say, you do you don't want to use either of these two unless you've got a real backup because it can just destroy your database bill. Right, right. Right. Yep. Um and the last last thing is Google Web Front Optimizer. Um I don't use this myself, I haven't used it, but I I put it as part because it deals you get a lot of plugins that are called an external font and the most popular is Google because it's free. So if you get a you get a plugin and he wants to use some for some reason some external font um, for control for whatever reason, he's most likely he or she is most likely going to call Google because it's free. Well, but if you get a load of plugins and they're all calling it, they're all separate calls to Google Front Library. Well, that, this can really slow your website to treacle as well. This then looks, takes all these separate front calls, it just makes one. Uh, but I don't know how, I don't, I've I got a feeling this this is the type of plugin that either works really well or it would take your whole website down. So um, I just got that feeling if I haven't even used it. So I would suggest that you use something like this, you have a total backup. Mm -hmm. Now you mentioned, uh... Uh, WP Optimizer, right? Yeah, that's one of the database cleaners. The, yeah, WP Optimizer. I use that. I love it. I love it. It cl really cleans up stuff. Yeah, but you do have a backup before you use it, don't you? Yeah, but I, I, out of my 14 sites, I had two go down. <laughs> two, <websites. laughs> two went down last month because of that, but I figured out what the problem was. You're crazy. I fixed, You're I crazy fixed them right away, though. You are. I recovered them right away. Good job, really, isn't it? Well, yeah. I think that, that's because the month before we just had the whole month before it was about backup. Thank you. Oh yeah, but um, I think it's all a balance, really. I, you know, I, I'm preaching stuff that I haven't really. When I look back at Mailrite, you know, I've got some more work to do. With WP um, Tonic. One of the problems with WP Tonic was I was recommended the theme, and it's a great theme. And I was recommended it. I was recommended <laughs> by. We should have gone to Genesis. I was, I was recommended it by um, wow. Pippin Williams and he, and. Um, it's WP Tonic, folks. And uh, I've hacked away at it a bit, and I, I just need to do a bit of optimizing on it. You got that because you wanted to have this cool podcast. And I've been doing podcasting for a long time. I say just all the top podcasters go Genesis, Genesis. Period. Yeah. They all, I mean, ninety percent. 90% of the very top podcasters are using Genesis for framework, and either a theme or they're doing uh, dynamic. It's, it's like dynamic. Talk to the expert, see what she reckoned. Of, Kim, of Kim is back to finish up our show. And Kim, Kim, um, your sound is good now. We're going to talk about that. We are we here sound. to test my, my mic worked? Yeah, part, yeah we're going to do mic work. Good. You sound amazing. Awesome. So what do you reckon, Kim, of my quick summary of the plugins to help you with your speed? Okay. I'm really here to listen to you guys on speed because I'm horrible on speed and I'm just learning. So I was like really speed. happy. Speed. Where's my coffee? I got tons you know, of what coffee. You guys were helping me with. I do love the WP optimize and I agree though. Yeah, I do. I have a backup. Um, in a former life, I was a database administrator. So I'm always like back up that dang database before you touch it because oh, yeah. I've blown up more Oracle databases in my life than I could even name. Um, but it does a great job because what people don't pay attention to, and, and I would say one of the, you know, one of the beauties of WordPress is you don't have to be super technical to use it and to learn it. And one of the downfalls is people sometimes don't talk enough about what's going on in that underlying database. And that does need to be optimized over time. You know, if you've got a site that's growing and things are adding and comments are being deleted, 
that needs to be optimized. And so I, I, I do like the WP Optimize. I mostly, I I mostly use it for, you know, pl- you know, unfortunately I've found if you've got a really ropey plug-in, that really slows it down. It's normally also the removal um, elements haven't really been that well coded either. So it tends to leave crud behind. So you've been hammered for twice for your mis- Miss Mamida for actually installing it. Do you, you agree with that, Kim? Absolutely. Yeah. And it's like, it, it, you know, those plugins are, it, when, what I teach my students is, you know, they're a blessing and a curse. Yeah. It's a great plugin. They extend it to where we can do beautiful things, but sometimes they can bring us to a screeching halt at the same time. And then, like you said, the frightening thing is it's not even always as easy as just deleting it. No, it's because yeah. normally the bad ones are normally not. But what yeah. you've got to remember is that if you had to hire um, and get that kind of coding done, customized coding from, you know, experience US-based coder, um, you, you, your eyes are going to walk, you know, most people, A, couldn't afford it, and B, they, to say they would have a bit of sticker shock would be uh, an understatement. And people just don't realise what a bargain a lot of WordPress plugins, the commercial plugins are, and what a bargain WordPress is compared to other um, content management systems if you wanted development or to build something, really. Right. They're, just, they're getting a bargain, really, aren't they? Well, they, it's, it's a double-edged sword in that, yes, they're absolutely getting a bargain, and it's beautiful. It's also, though, even with great developers that might be awesome PHP guys, doesn't always mean they, one, understand WordPress. You mentioned that earlier, Jonathan. Yeah. Like, they know PHP, but then they don't know WordPress, and they build something that doesn't work. Or... Sometimes they're great. I, I see this a lot with theme developers. They might be great PHP people, but they don't understand what the underlying structure should be for SEO. Okay. And I'm not an SEO guru. I, I'm not at all. But I do know that you should not have seven H1s on a page. Can you I, know? Right. We talk about H1 we, H1. we get themes, right? And they've got. Every single widget is an H1, and you've got all of a sudden 20 H1s. It's like, no, 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 no. I, I don't you, understand SEO, but I do understand I was an yeah. English teacher. It's like yeah. a it's like a term paper. <laughs> we have one H1, and then we have the littles underneath can I, it. <laughs> um, can, I tell you, <laughs> yes. can, I, can I tell you the realities of SEO, actually? Um, really top SEO people, and I've known, I know a couple that really are. We've got one in town. It, it, M.A. in Matt in English. I'm talking about. I'm talking about really, really top people. I was talking. Funny enough, true. funny enough, he was on Moss. Funny enough, he was on Blab today. Um, forgot forgot his first name though, but he's the head of Moss in um, Seattle, um, and he was on, and he is a top expert. I, I know a couple really top people. They work for Fortune 500 companies, and mm-hmm. they're getting paid over two hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year, right? Mm-hmm. And most of the people that you and I meet, the so-called SEO experts, um, the real SEO experts I know, not always, but most of them, they're working for some major company, and they're earning major money. And a lot of the so-called, not all of them, because it's a sweeping statement, but there's a lot. I I know a lot about SEO, but I, I don't call myself it because the expert is can do the stuff, can get a result. Right. And I know all the theory and I've done a lot of it, but it's only when you're working on a project of your own or with a client that's got the foresight to invest the time and money in proper SEO, as I call it, that, that you can judge that you really do know. So it's a bit of a chicken and an egg. But it's, I know no area where right. so much rubbish is spoken about, apart from I, politics. I <laughs> absolutely, you know what? I think that's true. I absolutely agree. Other than politics, SEO is. But what I'm saying is I don't know SEO, but I do follow Moz, and I know that they talk about, 
before you even get to SEO, there is a website structure we need to have. And that's my point. Right, right. You're, it's, you're, it's, yep. This is Ma's stuff. You know, I follow. I don't know SEO. I don't write for SEO. I write for myself and my my tribe. But if we're having to have this thing and go, this is the website structure we should have. And being that I was an English teacher and I liked what term papers should look like. I get that when, you know, the SEO people say this, we should not have five H1s on a page. And Google right. will tell you, uh, Matt Cuts will tell you, you should not have five H1s on a page. Right. Yeah. So we shouldn't it- have themes that have five, 10 H1s on a page. That's what I'm saying is it's not just about looking good. We have to get into the structure and, and dig deep and make sure that we're giving and, uh, people good stuff. Uh, I, I, I mean, to say this, there's part of me that just wanted to say this, Kim, but yeah. but um, the wizard is correct. Um, basically, that's one of the strengths of Genesis is that it, uh, Genesis framework and a child theme based on it, the, S, the fundamentals of SEO are pretty rock solid. You're not going to end up with a theme that's got like five H1s on it or some other crazy Right. bit of dog seo um that's one of the attraction also one of the attractions of the genesis frameworks when it comes to that so it's been really good for me hey as we that. finish up we, we got to start another show in four minutes and that's you can come and laugh it's our our real estate show yep. which i'm actually a broker 25 years <laughs> even though i'm not really practicing broker but kim i've got to ask yeah. you and i really appreciate you coming on today and we're going to definitely coordinate and have you on as the guest for next month's uh, show about, uh, you know, creating online training yeah. and different ways to do it. I think that's really important for both Jonathan and I right now with what we're doing. So, But we got to ask you, what are your websites and the name of your business? See All right. So the one that is just got put back under uh, maintenance because we just changed everything is White Glove Web Training. Normally, I show up in a white tuxedo shirt. You saw that, Jonathan, <laughs> at... Uh, WordCamp Las Vegas, and I'm White Glove Web Training, and uh, I also have How to Build an right. Online Course dot com because that's really my passion right now. I like that domain name, How to Build an Online Course dot com. Yes, sir. Not bad. Did that cost you a fair bit of money, or did you get that uh, in the early days? I got that at the eight ninety nine price. Oh, <laughs> wow! Oh my God. Well, that's eight ninety nine. Oh, that's a bulk, would it? You can't, you can't get it unless you have a reduced cost, eight ninety nine. Now you can't get websites for eight ninety nine unless you the, have like um, a membership. I do that GoDaddy Go bulk uh, I've, domain I've, thing because I I'm one of those crazy people who buys like you, I don't know how many you know domains. I, <laughs> you know what I did? I got that's a good way to finish. I want to tell everybody what I did this week. It really screwed me up. I had so much to do. I'm supposed to be working my courses. I have a bulk domain like you do, and it's like eight thirty two or whatever. But you pay a hundred bucks a year yeah. to maintain that. So I said, why don't I take this money and this money and I'll start having my own domain company. Mm-hmm. So I, I said, this shouldn't be too hard and build a website. I started, I just bought my own first domain for my own company, but what a pain to set it up and get it going and get it right. You got to build a skin, you got to overlay it and yeah, I have support. So, and I said, I'll just charge it like a dollar 50 more than it costs me. So I'm nine ninety nine right now. And it's about the same core value. By the way, when you buy that GoDaddy, that's about what GoDaddy's ex- cost them at 832 right. you know with everything they do they have to pay uh quite a bit to, to even buy and maintain those domains but anyway i bought so that's my latest venture it took me a lot more time than i thought jonathan didn't you know about that right <laughs> my theory is 9.99 it's all gonna get in your product and then you keep you know i don't know what you're up to but well, I, well, I, I have no terrible. idea what you're up to i thought i was skittish but... yeah, oh uh, we got to talk about jonathan one more time so we go to another show <laughs> i tell jonathan he, we have something called 1MC. It's out of uh, Kansas City. It's 1 million cups. And we have a really good 1 million cups in Reno, Nevada. I said, Jonathan, you're on the 14th. I said, you're going to be there. I'll come down and watch you at 1MC. I used to go all the time. And he said, no, I'm not, no, no it's a, like 20-something. No, not then. So, no, I think you were on. I said, I, I can't find it, but I saw somewhere where you're on. And then out of the middle of nowhere, he has to run down from Carson got, City got, to Reno. I got down the, you did a good job, by the Bill, way. I'm Bill, I got down there in 20 minutes. <laughs> I know. And then they had somebody blab between you. I watch it remotely. That's one MC Reno. You can, you can Google it. Actually, you did a great job. And you had, you know, the one lady, they, you have your presentation, they troubleshoot you. And one lady said, you said some word basic. a couple of times. That's the only I do say it. basic. 
you should, you shouldn't say basic, but that's the only criticism I had. And you really came out strong at the end, and you talked about the podcast. Very important. Yeah, that's great. But um, I just want to say about finish off about um, Las Vegas Word Camp. I thought it was excellent. What did you think? Uh, I thought it was well run, and the quality of the speakers, including yourself, were generally really good. And I, I thought I, I you, thought no. it had a really good buzz to it. What, what was your feelings about it? I loved it. And well, I appreciate you saying that about me. Thank you. I was so blown away because, you know, here I, I fly in from Florida. I didn't know what to expect. It was amazing. It was beautifully run. What a great space. Yeah. It was just, I, I, it really was one of these. I've been to a lot of word camps and I love every word camp. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. And my, my one thing with word camps is I came out of high tech when we were doing like big shows, you know, in Vegas and, you know, I was with IBM mm -hmm. and stuff. So I always love word camps, but that one was just really special. I thought all the speakers were fantastic. I thought it was run, like you said, beautifully. I was so shocked to find out it was just two guys that did it. No, the, the team. Like, the, like, yeah. like the one guy had dropped out and two guys picked it up. And I'm like, I'm used to WordCamp Miami. I'm from Florida. We got a team of people doing this. And it was just like two guys doing it. Brilliant. Absolutely. Brilliant. Yeah. All right, I think we I think we provided some value, Bill, shall we say? It was a fun show. You know what? I'm Thanks, writing guys. a... I'm, 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 I'm going to join, the, gonna join <laughs> us for Mail Right. That's, I'm going to join us for Mail so, Right. Everyone say goodbye and yeah, check out Mail Right. We talk about real estate. Get rich in real estate. No, that's not what it's about. It's actually about for real estate agents and what they might do. And we'd love to have it's, some tech um, folks. It's tech based their though, ideas. Kim. It's very techy. So. Okay. Yeah, Google, we, big, big believer in blogs. So I'm going to go ahead and pause this. Say goodbye, everybody. Bye, guys. Say goodbye. Thank, thank you, you. For, for coming on. Jonathan, thank you for thank coming you. on. No, Jonathan, I just joke. Oh, God. Don't forget to check out 4 o'clock and 5 o'clock on Thursday. So that's specific time. And Sunday at 930. So later on this month, so go on over and lock in your $10 price at podcastershome forward slash blab. Till next time, keep on smiling.